So good morning. Uh, we will continue the chapter wave optics. And today we will see another phenomenon of light called polarization. In the other phenomena like interference and diffraction, they show that light is a form of wave, but they do not tell us what kind of wave, whether light is a longitudinal wave or a transverse wave. When light shows this phenomenon of polarization, it is an evidence that light is a transverse wave. Let us see what is meant by polarization of light. Here you can see in this picture, there is a blue wave and a red wave. See, they are perpendicular to each other. In the beginning of this chapter, we introduce light as a electromagnetic wave. We told that light is a combination of electric and magnetic wave, where both electric and magnetic fields vary perpendicular to each other and also to the direction of propagation of wave. Here, we can see two waves, the blue wave. Suppose the blue waves express the electric field and the red waves represents the magnetic field and the light wave is getting propagated along this line. So here you have vibrations in two different directions. In actual case, light is vibrating in all the directions, all the directions. And we are resolving that into two directions. And this wave, when it comes, and when they pass through a polarizer, what is a polarizer? It is a mm, organic material called polaroid, where there are many molecules which exist like chains. And the distance between these chains are so narrow or there is so like a slit that when the light ray come out of that, one the vibrations in one directions are cut off and the vibrations occur only in one particular direction. To visualize that in another way, consider this as a string. If you keep the string and vibrate it up and down, if we keep the string and start vibrating it up and down, then what will happen? Uh, the wave will go up and down. And at the same time, you vibrate in the horizontal direction. So you will get like this waves, the wave that go up and down and also horizontal direction. Now, if you keep a narrow slit in its path, the wave that comes out will be vibrating only in one direction. These horizontal vibration cannot pass through this vertical slit. So the upcoming wave will have vibrations only in this direction. Such kinds of waves are called polarized waves. Here, now to check whether a wave is polarized, we can use another small slit, which is called the analyzer. This is called the polarizer because it polarized the wave. Now, another one is called analyzer because it analyzes whether the wave is polarized or not. Now, if you keep the slit in the analyzer parallel to that in the polarizer, what happens? The light ray or the wave will pass through. Or if it is a string, the wave will pass through the analyzer. Now, if you keep the slit perpendicular to the slit in the polarizer, what will happen? Will the wave come out? No, the wave will not come out. So this helps us to identify whether the wave is polarized or not. This is the kind of an example for any wave which can be polarized. Now let us see what is meant by polarization. If such a condition can be, excuse me, for one minute. Oh, 
Okay, so that is called polarization. Let us see what is meant by polarization. If such a condition can be imposed on the vibration of wave so that its vibration is confined along a particular direction or in a particular plane, then it is called polarization. Here you can see when the string which was vibrating in both directions, when it passed through the polarizer, it gets vibration only in one direction or in one plane. So this is an polarized wave. Is it clear to you what is meant by polarization? Of yes, teacher. Wave? Okay. So here, this is showing ordinary light. Ordinary light, where, which means light which is vibrating in all the directions. See, the vertical lines with arrow marks show up and down or uh, vibration in the Y direction. And the dots show vibration to and fro. For example, vibration in the Z direction. And this light is propagating in the X direction. Actually, there are vibrations in all the directions. We are resolving that to Y and Z direction. Now, when it comes out of a polarizer, polarizer, as I told you, is an organic compound where molecules are arranged as strings and the distance between them act as a you know, transparent medium for light. So they act as a slit and the light that comes out of a polarizer. Can you see any difference between this ordinary line and this plane polarized in the figure? What is yes. that? What is that? The, the light becomes only in a plane. Yeah, it's vibrating only in one plane. See, the dots are missing, which means the vibrations in the Z direction are cut out because the slit is in the Y direction. So only the vibrations in that direction will come. Now, this is an analyzer. Why is the light, plain polarized light coming out of the analyzer? Can you guess? Why? the light coming out of the polarizer, uh, the analyzer is similar to this one, the plane polarized. Because the slit in the analyzer and the polarizer is in the same direction or the angle between those two slits are zero. They are in the same direction, they are parallel. Now, if we rotate this analyzer so that the angle between the slit in the polarizer and the analyzer is 90 degree. If we rotate the analyzer through 90 degree, will any light come out? No. Why? Because these vibrations also will be cut off because the slit is at 90 degree to the vibrations, so they cannot come out. So this is an example of polarization of light. Now from polarization of light, we can conclude that light wave is transverse. While diffraction and interference told us only that the light is a kind of wave, but what kind of wave that is shown by polarization of light. Now let us learn more about the polarization of light. Here, let us learn few terms which are related to this phenomenon. First of all, what is meant by an unpolarized light? The light waves which can vibrate equally in every direction in a plane, normal to the direction of propagation is called an unpolarized light. Here, as I told you, in actual case, there is vibration in all directions in the plane, perpendicular to the direction of propagation. And we are showing this uh, vibrations resolved in the Y and Z direction for our understanding. Here in this figure also, there is vibration actually in uh, the plane, which is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. We are showing it just by up and down and horizontal vibrations. So this is unpolarized light. This is unpolarized light. Now, what is a polarized light if the vibration of the light wave is confined to one plane? Here, 
the vibration is confined to one plane. See, it's going up and down only. Here again, you can see the polarized light where the light is going up and down only. Now, what is meant by a polarizer? The crystal which is used to produce polarized light is called a polarizer. As I told you, there are molecules, chains, and in between it acts as slits and it can act as a polarizer. Now, what is an analyzer? The crystal which is used to detect whether a light is polarized or not is called an analyzer. We saw in the previous figure, if we keep the analyzer parallel to the polarizer, what happens? The light will pass through. Now, if you rotate it through 90 degree, the light will not come out because even the vibration in that direction will be cut out. Now, what is meant by the plane of vibration? The plane in which a polarized light is vibrating is called the plane of vibration. Here you can see it is going up and down. So this dotted one shows the plane of vibration in the y x direction. So this is called the plane of vibration. Now what is plane of polarization? The plane which is normal to the plane of vibration, which means the z axis along the z axis this h g f e is called the plane of polarization which means the vibrations in that direction is cut off so can you tell me from here using the letters which is the plane of vibration a b c a b c is a plane of vibration and which is the plane of polarization? H, G, E, S. H, G, C, H, G, O, F, E, H, G, F, E. So there, there is no vibration. So is this terms clear to you? Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Now let us see another uh, situation where we get polarized light polarization by reflection. We know that when light is incident on any medium, any transparent medium, a part of it gets reflected and a part get refracted. A part of it will get reflected and move to the same media while a part of the light ray get refracted and goes to the transparent media. Now there is an interesting phenomena which is seen, which is seen by Brewster. When an unpolarized beam of light falls on a boundary, reflected wave and refracted wave are partially polarized, which means the reflected and refracted waves will be partially polarized. But if they are falling at a particular angle called Brewster's angle, what happens? The ray, the reflected ray is completely polarized. Let us see here. Brewster's law. Brewster's law states that at a particular angle of incidence, the reflected ray is completely polarized. See here, you can see the reflected ray, which is completely polarized. And the angle between the reflected and the refracted ray is 90 degree. This angle of incidence is called Brewster's angle. So this is a particular or a peculiar phenomenon shown by light. If light is incident on a transparent medium at a particular angle, and this angle depends upon the medium, okay? This angle depends upon the medium. Uh, it depends on the refractive index of the medium. So if it is incident at a, at a particular angle here shown by theta b, because it is called Brewster's angle, what happens? The reflected light will be completely polarized in one direction and the refracted ray will be partially polarized. This shows partial polarization, okay? And the angle between them is 90 degrees. So this is a peculiar phenomenon 
shown by light and here the incident angle is equal to ib or theta b the sometimes in some books it is shown by ib and some books by theta b both means the same where ib or theta b is called the brewster's angle of incidence now we know that by snell's law sin i by sin r is equal to mu and here the angle of incidence is ib or brewster's angle so i have substituted here sin ib divided by sin 90 minus ib why this angle r is taken as 90 minus ib can any one of you tell how this angle r angle of refraction becomes 90 minus ib what will be this angle angle of reflection what will be this angle angle of reflection it will be ib or theta b because always angle of reflection is equal to angle of incidence that is the law of reflection so this angle also will be equal to ib and this is 90 degree so what is this whole angle in a straight line this angle total angle is 180 right so if you reduce this 90 degree this ib plus r will be equal to 90 degree so i can take r as equal to 90 minus ib is that clear to you how the angle of you can you repeat this part by 90 minus ib yeah let me show this straight line the straight line you know and what will be the total angle for the straight line angle of reflection 180 degree plus 90 plus r is 180 degree right now yes avoid this 90 degree what is remaining 90 degree yes this angle plus this angle that is ib plus r uh, yes, yes. is equal to 90 degree so what is r what will be r is uh, 90 minus the rest of the angle yeah 90 minus this angle this angle is angle of reflection which is same yes. as the angle of incidence ib now is that clear irfan yes it is clear okay so i can substitute here instead of r 90 minus ib so what is cos 90 minus theta sin 90 minus theta it is cos theta so sin ib by sin cos theta cos ib is equal to mu or tan ib is equal to mu as i told you before this angle particular angle at which the reflected ray will be completely polarized depends upon the refractive index of the medium so what is the relation between the brewster's angle and refractive index tan ib is equal to mu you will have to memorize this equation tan ib is equal to mu to solve problems so is this concept of brewster's law clear to you yes teacher okay. teacher yeah the value of ib will never be 90 right no it will never be 90 degree yeah cos 90 is undefined so yeah because yes. see cos uh, the that angle is 90 means the light is going along this surface this angle is 90 means this is going yes. along the surface so there will be no reflection no refraction just yes, understood so it cannot be 90 degree so tan ib is equal to mu it will be always less than 90 degree 